diagnosis and management of necrotizing fasciitis. We'll be focusing on clinical recognition and the immediate steps needed for this surgical emergency. So, what exactly is necrotizing fasciitis, or NF? Well, it's a very serious soft tissue infection. The key things to remember are that it moves incredibly fast and it destroys the fascia and the tissue around it. And this condition is extremely dangerous. Even when we do everything right, the mortality rate is still over 30%. That really highlights why every second counts. We're going to walk through this in five parts. We'll start with how to spot it, then cover diagnosis, management principles, the actual therapies, and wrap up with a few special considerations. First up, clinical recognition. How do you identify the signs that you have a surgical emergency on your hands? The number one clinical clue, the hallmark sign, is pain that is completely out of proportion to what you're seeing on the physical exam. If the patient is in agony, but the skin looks only mildly affected, that should set off alarm bells. This infection evolves very quickly, sometimes in a matter of hours. So you have to know the early signs versus the late signs. Early on, you'll see that severe pain, some redness, and swelling. But later, this progresses to discolored skin, blisters, crepitus, and eventually obvious tissue death. Okay, next section, diagnostic evaluation. What tools can we use to confirm what we're suspecting? You've probably heard of the LRINAC score. That's the Laboratory Risk Indicator for Necrotizing Fasciitis. A score of 6 or higher points to a high risk, but, and this is important, this score is just a tool. It should never delay a trip to the operating room. A low score doesn't rule out the disease if your clinical suspicion is high. Imaging can sometimes be helpful, but it cannot delay surgery. An MRI has the highest sensitivity, but it takes time. Ultrasound is great for a quick look at the bedside to check for gas or fluid. A CT scan might show gas too, but it's not as sensitive as an MRI. Again, the main takeaway here is that a negative scan does not rule out NF. Another diagnostic tool is the bedside finger test. You make a small 2cm incision down to the fascia. If your finger passes through the tissue planes with no resistance, that's a positive test. You might also notice a lack of bleeding and see some of that classic dishwater pus. At the end of the day, labs and imaging are supportive. The definitive way to diagnose this is with surgical exploration. That is the gold standard. And once in the operating room, the diagnosis is confirmed when the surgeon finds that necrotic, dead fascia, the foul-smelling dishwater pus, tissues that don't bleed, and fascial planes that just fall apart with blunt dissection. All right, let's shift to management principles guided by the 2025 consensus framework. There are really five core strategies here. You need early diagnosis and quick surgical debridement, broad-spectrum antibiotics, aggressive fluid resuscitation, constant reassessment of the patient, and solid nutritional support. So let's talk more about the actual surgical and medical therapies. These are the cornerstones of treatment. The single most important therapy is emergency surgery. This isn't a small procedure. It's a radical debridement of all the dead tissue until the surgeon reaches healthy tissue that bleeds. This often means the patient will need to go back to the OR multiple times. Antibiotics need to be started immediately. You can go with a multi-drug approach to cover all your bases, gram-positives, gram-negatives, and anaerobes. Or you can use a powerful single agent like piperacillin tazobactam or carbapenem for broad-spectrum coverage. Now, you'll almost always see clindamycin used. That's because it does more than just kill bacteria. It actually suppresses toxin production, especially from strep infections. This helps calm down the massive immune response that contributes to shock. Finally, let's cover a couple of special considerations, the different classifications, and a specific variant you need to know about. We generally classify NF into two main types. Type 1 is the most common. It involves multiple types of bacteria, and you often see it in patients who are post-op or immunocompromised. Type 2 is caused by a single bacteria, usually strep pyogenes, and it can be linked to streptococcal toxic shock syndrome. And then there's Fournier's gangrene, this is simply a specific subtype of necrotizing fasciitis. It's defined by its location, affecting the perineal, genital, or perianal areas. So that brings us to our final and most important point. With a disease that moves this fast and has a mortality rate over 30%, what's the single most important action you can take to improve a patient's chance of survival? The answer is clear. Immediate surgical exploration and aggressive debridement. Any delay is catastrophic.